Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Uh, nice to have you along. We look forward to talking to you this evening about, uh, of course, all the uh, awards and presentations that were done at uh, last week's um, Western Province Rugby Awards dinner. Everybody got their trophies. It was an endless amount and we did an endless amount of filming on the night. And uh, it took us an endless amount of time to, to capture all that. And we, of course, we're going to upload them to YouTube. We, uh, we just did a, a brief selection of some of the, the interviews from the evening. Of course, there were so many to do. Um, and of course, uh, as of next week, we'll continue with our history feature. Last week, we had Dave Kagan and Joe Abrams telling us about how to co collate uh, your various um, archives and documents and old photographs from your club, which will illustrate your history. So that starts next week when we have Dave Kagan and Joe Abrams back on the show to tell us this time not about how to put the show, uh, at least how to collate the data, but more in terms of actually the histor history of Hamilton's and, of course, the history of uh, Primrose. Hello, Mr. H. Good evening, JP. You like that one, Joe? Ach, nee, wat ek is. Pertfris. Pertfris, ja. Tero, hoe gaan jou? Baie goed, JP. Lekker om weer terug te wees. Ek is seker jy het my gemis verlede week. Was hy nie hier nie? Was hy hier so? Ek weet nie. Ek het nou self sommer vergeet. Was hy nie uit? Jy het verlede week gepraat oor die history. Ek is te jong om die history van my te uitselen. Mr. H, blijkbaar het jy nie so gewatch nie, want die laatste week Mr. H my sjelle nog gesê, hy sê, hy pas hier in die history feature in nie. Hy is jong. <laughs> anyway, of course, uh, tonight coming up, we'll take a look at some of those awards and trophies. And uh, of course, the man that's been organizing that uh, awards dinner for the last 20 years um, is Herman Abrams. So, man, Mr. H, we might as well go straight to you and ask you, tell us more about the awards dinner. I mean, I've watched you do this for a number of years <laughs> now. Um, I've been invited to a few of them and it, it's actually quite a big process. Yeah, it, it's actually grown from a stand around finger licking uh, gathering for half an hour at the, in the Newlands boardroom yeah. to uh, a sit down in the uh, railway mall yeah. and then we moved where we are now at Calvin Grove and uh, sponsors and people and other, it just grew bigger and we had to cut out. Previously we gave first round trophies also yeah. but uh, process became too long but now uh, one of the things that I've noticed over the over the years is that uh, for quite a few weeks before before the the awards dinner you start collecting trophies yeah no, you know when the, like on Wednesday night all those trophies go out I think there's about 36 or 38 of them yeah and they must come back at one stage and you know it's, it's strange that in 20 years or 15 years that I've been doing it. Yeah. We only lost one trophy. But obviously, it's not. But but I've, I've watched you now in the, in the month before the awards dinner. It's a scramble. It, I'm assuming people are putting those trophies in all different places. Yeah. In, like in cupboards and, and, and at, the, at the clubhouse and at someone's house yeah. for safekeeping and. And some of the people, you know, uh, you know how we how we we use the cups and we celebrate and then the ear goes and or it falls and it gets dented, then we must fix it. Yeah. And normally at the end of, or, or when we have all the trophies there, and we take it out again to have it cleaned up, then there's quite a lot of damage to some of them. Um, Jerome, you've, you've, uh, you, you've, you've uh, received this award a few times. Um, what do you do with those trophies? Yeah, JP, I've got a, I've got a special cupboard at home where I, where I put my stuff and with my photos and all the memorability that I've got over the years. And um, that's the trophy that I, that I treasure, whether it's the best forward, the player of the year or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, also what? you know that that thing is, at some stage, it must go back to the union. Do you get tempted not to give it back? Yeah, sometimes, but uh, take, take a few photos uh, and then you keep it and you always keep it, but you must give it back. I mean, I was, I, was, I was lucky, I was one of the few people ever to have the World Cup trophy at home, the actual IRB Rugby World Cup trophy at home, because we were doing a, a road show with it. And it was a moment that I thought I might just keep that trophy. <laughs> and, and that's, a lot of, that's a lot of money, JP, that one you can yeah. keep. Yeah, that one, that one, everybody wants that trophy, I'll tell you something. So what was your best trophy, Jerome? Um, as I said, JP, I, I had a few of those. Um, but um, also to be awarded the, the player of the year and player uh, 
players player and things like that that's yeah. that's always a, a big honor to receive a thing like that because i mean you don't nominate yourself yeah and it just shows the respect that your teammates and the other people that select you um to to yeah. receive that re award so it's always a big thing to receive any award at, at western province of course uh, mr h uh, tons of uh, different awards are, uh, are handed out over the night i mean uh, you know if i go through this list here and we, we interviewed, and it was, it was actually probably the first time last year we did a live show. This was the first time where we actually interviewed every single winner. And it was like a conveyor belt. And we, <laughs> we could obviously only do a minute, a minute and a half at a time yeah. because the queue was starting to build up. Not to mention that all the provincial players and the 19 players and the 21 players, uh, the women's team. I mean, it was an enormous amount of different squads and teams, first, second and third and reserve leagues being handed out. Yeah, the, the, the leagues, as I said, you know, there are 36 different leagues. Okay. So those get the 36 trophies just for them. One of, the, one of the things that I noticed while we were doing the trophy handover is that some of those trophies are extremely old. They go way, way back. I mean, yeah. one, one trophy was the Tigerberg Rugby Football Union Trophy. Yeah, uh, 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 the one thing about the trophies is that we have trophies of all the un all previously yeah. existing unions in that bunch and this very old trophies. There's old trophies over 100 years old. Those shields, those big shields are all over 100 years old. And it's fascinating to, to you know, when I looked at the, sh at, at the trophy, it made sense to me because I think if I, if I hadn't heard what Dave Kagan and Joe Abrams had said about the, um, you know, about the, the, the little bit of the history of Western Province Rugby, that it was made up of all those unions, I wouldn't have known what that trophy was. So when, when they brought the trophy, it made sense. Um, and you say they go back quite a time. Yes, no, there's quite a number of them that are over 100 years. And uh, they're very expensive. Yeah. Uh, the, the Super League A trophy, when we, when we, two years ago, when we took it to have it a little bit repaired, the, the guys who actually offered us a lot of money for that trophy. <laughs> so that's why, you know, we, we are contemplating that the trophies must just be given out on the night and then be returned. At yeah. the same time, because yeah. it's becoming a risk. I suppose yeah. one could in, in, insure them. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure if one could insure them, but it would probably be yeah. a lot. You'd have to have a, them evaluated. And <laughs> anyway, that, that would be a whole, the whole story. Right, folks. Uh, well, as I said earlier on, we, we had so many interviews to do. It was, it was a, a, a jam-packed night. Um, we're going to take a look now at one of our first interviews. And, of course, uh, this is closer to the juniors the under 19s and the under 21s let's uh, catch up with some of uh, the award winners there on the night all right men so some of my know is justin ben he is uh, the vp rugby so on a 90 best voorspeler van the year uh, justin uh hoogste punte laagste punte for you as you know a bit terugkijk in the season is a energies for your special update all is special good is sicker Toen ons twee keer, twee keer in die bellen gewen het, definitief toen ons al gespeeld het op loftes, toen winnen ons die bellen weer, so dat is een hoogtepunt in ons seizoen en dat zal ons definitief deer draak naar die uh, finale toe. Justin has just been voted as the best back in the Western province. Justin, um, fast, speed, stepping, what are, the what are your, your strong points? A bit of all. A bit of all. So now what is it wat jy doen as jy drie groot spelers voor jou sien? Step jy hulle of gaan jy om hulle? Uh, kijk maar waar, as jy gaat, die meer gaat waar, dan kies jy maar. En dan step jy hulle? Ja. Ladies and gentlemen, Stee Setole, the uh, Western Province most promising under 19 player. Stee, are you under 19? Look at the size of you. <laughs> oh yes, I'm definitely am under 19, yeah. Yeah, and uh, tell us about some of your highlights of the season. Uh, it's been up and down with injuries, uh, but I managed to keep everything together. Uh, my strongest point so far has been the scrumming for sure. Yeah. What does it take? I mean, is it, is it tough? Is it tough it to is, make it, it to be? It's definitely tough. A lot of hard work we put in since the beginning of the year. Yeah. Tell us about this. What's this for? Um, basically just for, I guess, I was promising under 21 player. And yeah, how did you get to that? Um, well, I've only joined the team about a month ago, so and I guess I've been performing well since then. So, <laughs> how do you perform well? What is it? What do, what do you have to put into into rugby to be a good player? Uh, just a lot of discipline, consistency. Um, I try and be, you know, true to myself and true to the team. Try and serve them as much as possible. So, who full of the minute trophy to win? I can wait. Eerst is when I say as a great voorrecht, omdat ik kan staan. Ik heb dat verwacht. 
so men die groot ouens een voetspoor is stap is een groot eer. Is harde weg? Alipad. En hoe voel het om die VP trui aan te trek? Nog eens is een groot eer. Ik ben als een van die grootste franchises in die wereld. So wat wat zie je voor die clubspelers daar buiten? Moet nooit opgeven dromen niet. Droom voort, werk hard en als je gelinterd komt, gebruik vaart het met beide handen. There you go, folks. Some proud boys there receiving their their shields and trophies, and they really look uh, look like they've got some uh, future talent. Of course, um, under 19, under 21 have done fantastic this year. As we know, they're in the finals. Um, Jerome, you're close to these boys, these under 19s and the under 21s, and and they uh, this, of course, uh, together with our with our Curry Cup team, are going to are, are basically playing in call it the younger Curry Cup version um, this weekend. Uh, Oh, you, you must be happy with the performance that's happened. Yeah, no, it's good, JP, and, and especially the under-21s. I mean, they basically got the win in the last second of the game. A uh, good pass by Tim Swill, and Pat Howard went, went over to go score. And yeah, the only yeah. way to win the thing was to go and score. And in the last second, they went and they, they did it. So it was really great. Uh, um, that's how semi-finals and finals are. You can never say that um, it, it comes down to, if it's close, if there's two points, three points in it, it comes down to the last second. Uh, the under-19s done well at Stellenbosch on Saturday. Uh, they've beaten the Lions with, with 14 points. Um, so they're on a roll this year. And um, the only team that really gave them a hard time this year was uh, the Bulls, which they play against. But um, playing fields are level for them. I mean, the under-21s in the under-19s play against the Bulls at, at, uh, um, in Durban. So there's no home ground advantage for any of that team, so it can go anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another success story of the year was, of course, uh, the uh, women's rugby. Uh, incredible stories there. We managed to catch up with um, uh, Natasha Hofmeister as one of our guests who, of course, been on the show before. And incidentally, it looks like uh, many of these uh, young ladies from the Marty's, or at least originate from the Marty's rugby team, are playing for Western Province. They've got a couple of Springboks in the team. Let's catch up with uh, two of the ladies in the Western Province rugby women's side. Folks, uh, with me now is uh, in the women's league, Danelle Rousseau. She plays for the Marty's, but um, this time uh, you guys uh, came out on top. Yes, uh, it's actually the fourth time in a row. Yeah, so it's not at this time as like a once only, but you guys have got a great team going there. Not a lot of women's clubs, are, uh, at least clubs out there, but Marty is definitely one of the more popular ones. Definitely, definitely. We know Natasha Hofmeister is playing out there. And so how did it go for you guys this season? It actually went very well. We uh, scored 100 tries and uh, there was only one team that was able to score one try against us. So um, There's yeah. always just that one team. Yeah, uh, it was actually in the last game, but uh, compliments to UWC. They had a good game against us. Are you guys proud? Very proud. Uh, we've got 14 Western Province players this year as well. And, 14, um, 14 Western Province? Yeah, and five senior Springboks and two junior Springboks. <laughs> Folks, with me now is Natasha Hofmesser, the captain of uh, the Western Province women's team. Uh, Natasha? Tell us a little bit about this prize. Uh, well, we got it in 2010, we lost it in 2011, and we got it back 2012. We played six games, we won all six games, and we're the only team in South Africa's women's rugby team that done this this year. Well, then the ladies have done fantastically there. Um, Mr. H, you've been following the ladies' performance uh, uh, quite uh, closely this year. Um, I mean, they just said there that they scored 100 tries with only one try against them. I mean, that's, yeah, that's an, an, an astounding performance. Yeah, that's, that's the Marty's team. I don't think it's the Western Province team. Right. But the Western Province team has done equally well. And I must, you know, give credit to the people around them. The manager of the Western Province team, the coach, uh, the, our development officers, they work hard at junior level and they're bringing all the players through to get to the top. Mm. And at club level, there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of hard work for, for women's rugby at club level. So although there are only eight or nine uh, teams playing there, they are doing a, a great job. But the, it, it seems like 
uh, I mean, I, from what you're just to build on what you're saying there, they're doing a great job. But they're not just doing a great job in the coaching, but they're also doing a great job um, in player retention. Because we, we see now a lot of the ladies played last year and the year before, and they're starting to group <coughs> together. I mean, I know that Marty's is obviously mm. the team that they, they seem to be um, migrating towards, maybe because Marty's got a big structure and, and, and so on. But it's a cohesive unit of, of ladies that are now learning to play together, and that's probably why we're seeing some good results. Yeah, and I, I, I must say that I think within the next two or three years, we will see an explosion because already our under-16 girls won their national tournament and they beat everybody by 40 points. So they are coming through. Our under-18 girls are, are doing exceptionally well. They didn't play in any tournaments, but they, they're there. Yeah. So it's, uh, there's a lot of, you know, the, the groundwork is being done and that's important for, 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 for women's rugby. Jerome, your uh, opinion on women's rugby in general in South Africa? I mean, we, we of course now have Women's Rugby World Cup as well. You, you, you travel a lot. You, you, you go to a lot of the, the, the uh, you know, certainly the African countries where you spend quite a bit of time, uh, you know, assisting and supporting. What do you make of women's rugby on an international basis? Um, yeah, JP, um, just talking about, the, talking about the international, it's the Kenyans women team. They just missed out on the next World Cup. They, they're also putting a lot of effort in, 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 in women, into, into women's rugby, so they just missed out on the, on the World Cup. But um, I think our girls uh, in the past, it were the, the Bulls. They were the people that were leading women's rugby. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, we passed them now, Mr. H. So I think, uh, um, they, as you say, the right people in place um, at women's rugby, they really work hard to get the girls up. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's it's just about the people. You must have the right people in place to sort of manage that goals. Yeah, Eastern Province was the, the darlings. Now, I don't know what happened there, but they sort of out of the equation at the moment. But they played exceptional women's rugby. So, but, you know, for us, we won. We're happy. We hope that we'll win again this weekend, all the others. The other, of course, aspect of the game that was interesting, um, uh, chatting to, and we're going to get to some of the provincial players in a minute. Uh, we managed to catch up with Brian Abana, and I mean, that was the guy to speak to, apart from, obviously, Eben Etzebet, who, who's made a big name for himself in the Springbok space, but in the uh, club rugby space, everybody's darling is Brian Abana, and we catch up with him a little bit later in the show, so stay tuned. Um, but the, the other side of, of the coin is, of course, the young referees that have been coming through through the mix and uh, the performance of the referees and, you know, uh, is it getting better, is it not getting better? That, that all remains to be seen. It, uh, my opinion is that it is improving. Of course, the referee does live in that situation of it's, it's not, a, not a friendly job. But we managed to come up uh, and uh, have a chat with some of the aspiring young referees that are coming through the ranks. Let's uh, hear what the boys had to say. Peter LaRue, the most improved referee in Western Province Rugby. And I tell you, if there's a place to be an improved referee where it's not easy, it's Western Province. A lot of teams out there. Peter, you look very proud. Well, I am. Um, it's a great honor for me to receive this trophy, and I would like to build on it in the future. Man, I say a good for us. How did you do it? Because it's a hard job. Well, it's hard to work. Every Saturday, we are going to in. Van vroeg of ons kwalen bij strijdblaas en dan die maag dan is dan die grote die club game. Was er enige games voor jou wat zoveel uitstek wat misschien moeilijk was of tough was? Ja, ik denk die game wat ik zo zei is dan uit is UCT die en is kei woens bij City Park. Dat was nogal een nogal een goede game geweest, baie lekker hard te brak bij geweest. Craig, you must be very proud of an award like this. Yes, I am very proud. Um, but yeah, I mean, it makes it a lot easier when you got the support of um, the Western Province and especially of your coaches. Um, so it makes it a lot easier, yeah. Do, are there any referees in Western Province that stand out for you? Um, yeah, I mean, there are some role models like the top referees, Craig Dubé, Jonathan Kaplan, um, guys like those that you try and mold yourself on. Um, but also, you, you're also your own referee as well. So you have to have your own style of refereeing. What is it that what, what, uh, it's a special mark on the right to be? Um, ek ek denk is net om om betrokken te bly by die game en uh, altyd te streng te bly van die game en om daarby te wees in die spel. Dis die beste seat in die huis. Is dit moeilik al hy werk? Ek meen ek weet julle ons nog hard swart. Ja, ek sal hom klaar geswart. Eh uh, altyd nou nog swart as die reels. 
Maar um, ja, dus gaat die lekker. Het is harde werk hier. Die oefening is lekker en het raakt niet lekker door. Is er niet dan zijn twee stress te baden? Ja, het is amazing, JP. En ik moet zeggen, de club guys, I mean, a lot of them are older than some of these boys, uh, um, refing them. But they have a lot of respect for, 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 for these guys. And I've heard, I mean, that sometimes that guys really, really um, raise their voice. And the response that you get is like the, the, the players, they understand. And there's no, um, no talking back or anything like that. They have a lot of respect for these young refs, which is really good for, our, for, for, for club rugby. And, and, and also we need, we need the younger guys to be there, to be, because they're the fit guys. They can uh, stay with the team and they really, they really not biased. They only get them to do with what the, they need to do. I've I got to ask you, Mr. H. Uh, I mean, the, the, I just don't think that there are enough. I know that there's all sorts of referee recruitment plans in South Africa, but I just don't see enough of our club rugby players stepping up to become referees. Why is it? Do we you have know, a cultural problem? You see, uh, a lot of players play until the age of 35, 36. And the referees are... They are retired by when they get to the age of 35. You don't think uh, it's a situation of our club rugby players don't know the rules of the game? No, I don't know. No, they should know the rules. Because, I mean, it, it, it is, no, it's, it, it's not an easy environment, you know. We, no, no. we even sometimes get it wrong. I, I just want to say, you know, what a great moment it must be for those young players, you know, referees, to stand up there and be, you know, acknowledged. Yeah. They just started out and here you are being acknowledged in front of your heroes as a referee in senior rugby and uh, you know a guy that always intrigued me was the referee Jason Jafter yeah small and look where's he now you know he when he came out first everybody was saying who is this primary school kid and uh, look where's he <laughs> refereeing curry cup semi-finals you and I have spent enough time at the tunnel on the field at Newlands <laughs> and, 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 and anybody who's been to Newlands and has stood at the tunnel knows that on the left hand corner who, who must be my, my favorite my favorite group of, play, of, of fans in the entire West Virginia, they sit on the left hand corner there at the tunnel folks if you ever have an opportunity you've got to take a, a, a look down to the right hand side obviously you'd be looking at it on camera so if you're on your right hand side of, of, of the tunnel at Newlands. Now there's a select group of VIP individuals that have got a spot there. They come early, those seats are not reserved, but somehow they're always in that seat. And I can tell you something, if, if, if you're uh, not, um, if you don't have a thick skin and you don't know the ins and outs of rugby at Newlands, you're in for a hell of a tough time. <laughs> and, and, and the reason that I, that, I, that I mentioned this is Mr. H going to your point, if I ever saw a referee who, in his junior years, uh, and I think Jason Jafter is probably still in his junior years, um, coming in for some stick as he was getting used to it, and he, and he handled it, was <laughs> Jason Jafter on the side of the field and Jerome McSinney lucks and beer <laughs> back down. <so. laughs> no, JP, the reason why I'm laughing because I've been uh, with the guys on the bench there, on the, on the field, yeah. and listening to these guys, especially the, 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 the touch touch, the assistant ref. Yeah. It's not easy for <laughs> guys, and I've been, I've been, I know exactly you know, what you're you know saying exactly about what Jason Jafta, the things that they said. Like they, it's I mean, you know, we, I heard them say on the side of the field there, you, you, you get your pass a brook on. Um, I heard them, they talk about when the Australians come down to, to play against any, any Australian who plays against our players at Newlands, they've always got to talk about the, the sheep. <laughs> the, the Australians are doing something with the sheep, Sterling Mortlock, I watched him take huge flack. Alla fluka i man in the man's scarf. He saw fluka was almost a man in his mask, almost a man, almost an auntie. They, they got they got taken to pieces. Um, but I think that the best and the funniest scenario I ever witnessed, because the one thing that you, you should learn in that space is you never back chat. No. If you're stupid enough to back chat those <laughs> gentlemen, do <laughs> you agree with me, Mr. Yeah, you're gone. The best <laughs> thing, the best thing also for that guys is to actually look at them and smile at them. Because if you don't look at them, they're just going to hammer the they whole day. They kill you. I have, I have deep, you know what? I have deep respect for those guys. And I, and I tell you something, who, a, a man who has even deeper respect for them than me is Brendan Fenter, who on many occasions decided he was going to be brave and stand up and say, gentlemen, please, we can't be speaking like that in front of a crowd like this. This is not acceptable behavior. 
<laughs> and that was the end of him for the next 18 minutes. <laughs> they spoke about his car, his mother, his pants, his haircut, his the, eyeballs. The way he used to run. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, it's terrible. But I also see that they, they not just that, that, that seats that they normally sit on now, uh, um, the game against the cheetahs. Yeah. As I was driving into the parking garage, they also got a spot in the parking garage now. Yeah, they're yeah, moving, so up they're moving up. Yeah, they're moving up. Well, quite frankly, I don't actually know what goes in that parking garage because it seems to me that when you get one ticket, you're obviously getting a, a Scottle Bright ticket free with that. <laughs> because in that in that parking garage at Newlands, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're making Budavos rolls inside the parking garage or not. <laughs> but they and the. The, the worst thing about that parking garage, and I'll tell you guys now, if you ever get in the parking garage, is just beware of the, the, the out-of-country 4x4 four four drivers who have to park across two lanes. Um, <laughs> Mr. H, that is an administrative scenario that you guys at the union are going to have to sort out at some other stage. Because clearly if you're coming out of Piketberg, <laughs> then you uh, uh, die mag om sommer oor drie parkeerplekke te parkeer. Nee, hel man, ek het die so 80, 100 kilometer gerei om te kom raak bekyk om Nieuweland en niemand gaan my sê waar ek gaan parkeer nie, meneer. Hierdie parkeerplek is myne en as ek oor die witlijn wil parkeer, dan parkeer ek oor die witlijn en dan ga ek my, my nog my brande my kook en my skotelbraai hierso met my 12 kinders gaan ek geniet op die rugby. Mense, ek gaan hard aanval hierso, hier is ek nie moes aangaan. But anyway, Mr. Ed, that is your scenario. Um, uh, so yeah, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, referees. Uh, yeah, great respect to, to to Jason Jaffa. But one of the referees in his name who popped out a lot amongst the younger referees was Jonathan Kaplan. What an impression he has made um, as a referee, an international standard referee. But he's shown a human side to him in the last few years that I think very few referees have managed to do. Um, Jonathan Kaplan caught up with up with us um, uh, during the course of of the evening and filled us in a little bit about. Um, uh, uh, what it's like to referee and what it means to be a referee. Let's see what he has to say. All right, folks, I'm holding the um, the Western Bronze Rugby Referees uh, Football Referee of the Year the award. And I mean, a man that, that is recognised on a global level in, in rugby, and what an honour to have him on the on the Cape Rugby TV show, uh, Jonathan Kaplan. Jonathan, I mean, do I need to say congratulations to you? You've got every medal in the book. No, no, it's, look, I, I was just saying earlier, it's not really about, you know, I've, I've obviously I've got a lot of awards over time, yeah. and each award is a, it's, it's important and it's special to get acknowledged for what you do, but it's much more than the award, you know, I've, I think I've prob probably been a bit remiss not to do as many club games as I could possibly have done over the last 10 years while I've been in Western Province, and I, I have um, stepped it up this year to try and make sure that I am not only... Um, doing the games but that I'm visible to the public as well yeah, to see yeah. that I am actually participating and I think that's probably the greatest like charity thing that I can do is give up my time uh, you know for the clubs and like you know <laughs> I can't always be perfect and I'm not always right but just to give of time is is I think uh, right the way forward. I watched you as a guest speaker at the UCT match where uh, you referee the match between UCT and Marty's uh, but I also know that that same morning you were refereeing a school game and then in the afternoon you had to race from 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 UCT down to Western Province to to run the line there. Um, how do you do it? How do you find the time? I mean, where do you find all this energy? No, no. Well, look, this is my job. You know, I'm a professional referee. My job is to referee, so I really do have a lot of time of my own. And the the little bit of time that I can give is is, is it's cool. Like for me, I'm I'm happy to do that. It's not like a big deal. And I, I, it's not for me. It's not like I'm working. It is a hobby that I enjoy doing, and I'm getting paid for it. So it's, yeah. so it's, it's a pleasure to do it. You know. One of the things that's come across for me since, and I remember you and I talking. I think in 1999 in a in a club in Durban on the on the, on the coast there with Vainant, Willie Fear and the boys, and yeah. and we sp we spent many hours chatting that evening. And it struck me that is is your personality. You have this different approach to the game it seems different approach to life than the other referees you have this this sort of more personal comfortable approach do you is that just you or, or do you realize that that's the best for the game no look i was just i was chatting to nick groom earlier and i, I said to him like one of the things i've been refing 29 years and one of the things i decided a long time ago probably after about three or four years was to develop a philosophy on the game just like i had a philosophy on life and so my philosophy on the game is, is about uh, contributing to the best of my ability. So that I've got to use my skill set yeah. to best. I'm, a, I'm in a service field, first of all. 
and I've got to use my skill set to best deliver a product which is um, best for my immediate customers. Mm. And those are the oaks on the field. Yeah, if yeah. I can make those oaks happy, I, I actually the assessor in the stands or the person who wants to tick me or cross me or criticize me, he can do that. He's paid, he's paid for his seat, he can do whatever he wants. But my joy comes from those immediate customers. When I know I've delivered a superior product and they've come off the field and they're exhausted and they've had a lack of game, that makes me hell of a happy. It's the same, it's the same type of arena that, uh, you know, like a comedian. Yeah. You know, a comedian, his job is to make people laugh and yeah. be happy. And he's got to get a tremendous sense of uh, enjoyment from watching it, ma himself making everyone happy. So it's the same thing. Like, I've got a huge burden of responsibility to try and make everyone happy. And sometimes, obviously, <laughs> I can't get it right all the time. But the fact that I've been around at this call face for yeah. that amount of time probably is uh, an indication that I, I do get it right most of the time. <laughs> Finally, folks, uh, a sports person, because I mean rugby is still sport, and it's actually in, it exists really for, for the society sort of to bring it. Would you agree with that, Jonathan? That rugby is a, it's there for society. Yeah, it, it's a great tool for society yeah, yeah. to come together and participate. It's a great, rugby is a great sport. I mean, the fact that we know about rugby yeah. or that we're in a country which, you know, rugby is sort of like a semi-religion, um, we're just fortunate like that. But rugby is, for me, it's a brilliant team sport. It's got some great values which you can apply for life as well. Um, final question, uh, any relation to Charlie Weir? <laughs> <laughs> no relation to yeah. Charlie Weir, but he was my favorite boxer of all time. And I'm thrilled to say that I am currently standing with my favorite referee of all time. So Jonathan, I'd like to award you <laughs> again. <laughs> no, thanks, uh, folks, what a pleasure to have a referee that's down to earth, normal and brings uh, actually the best out of rugby on the field. And that's make, makes it pleasurable for us to watch. Uh, Jonathan, listen, thanks. It's a uh, stack. It's an honor and a privilege for us yeah, to be able to chat to you on the show. Yeah. You know, now finally you've got some viewers out there who, who would actually recognize you in a mall. There you go, folks. Jonathan Kaplan, um, what a gentleman. And clearly giving back to school rugby, uh, club rugby. He's refereed quite a few games. Mistakes, why, why is he refereeing club rugby apart from the fact that he just loves refereeing? I mean, he does sometimes three, four games in a day. Yeah, and, you know, he's refereed his thousand senior matches. And I, I, I quite it's unbelievable, you know, to think that uh, a man of his stature, who refereed 86 test games, would mm. come down to that. But that makes good refereeing. It does. Because I think you learn, you know, there, you see something else again. Yeah. And like, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a great referee. So. Jerome, why is he not refereeing more? Is it, is it because he's such a top level international referee? Why do we not see him more at, at Curry Cup level? Like, for example, this, this, this week, I think we see Johan Mierwissen and, and Jakub, Piper. Jakub Piper is doing the yeah, Curry Cup. Yeah. Uh, even uh, Quentin Amulman is, yeah. is running the touch yeah. um, for, for, I think, some of the juniors. I think, in, in, in fact, and then, of course, there's the, the, the Kings taking on the Cheetahs in, his line, in PE. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Kaplan's not in the mix there at all. Is it because of his international stature? I think, JP, I think what SA Rugby is currently doing is they're bringing the young guys through. And I mean, he has done a couple of finals and things like that. So they just want to see how some of the youngsters handle the pressure in, in, in the finals. Because Jakub Piper and that guys are currently under, they're going to be part of the IRB's referees panel now. Right. So I think they want to see how they handle that, which is also good because I, I think Jonathan Kaplan he can handle any any situation. I mean, he's yeah. ref World Cups and everything. So I think it's good. It's good of them. And it's also, as you were saying, that he's um, doing a lot of club rugby. And I've seen club games where he also uh, um, not just penalise the guys, but he'll explain to them why, which is good. He almost like coached them on the field. Yeah, why yeah. he's giving them the penalty. With, with, without, of course, trying to take the limelight. Yeah. Because, I mean, some of the referees in the past who are now the senior referees in South Africa, uh, they, they clearly yeah. thought this is drama time. Yeah, I think, I think at, at, especially at club level, uh, with some of the guys uh, with the new laws, changing laws every time, yeah. it's good that a guy like that comes and, 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 and actually ref that game so he can, he can teach the guys that. And at club, at, at, at provincial games, that is, you get some, 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 some of the guys who try to do that at provincial games. And that's not good. So I think that's what good thing that Jonathan Jonathan is doing, giving can back I, to the clubs. Can I ask you a question? Did anybody after a game that Jonathan Kaplan refereed say the referee was corrupt? No, that's 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 why I say because 
No, no, I want to know. No, he is, he is never, he's never. Because, he's you know. Never, uh, I've never heard anything. Because uh, I believe that it doesn't matter who you bring. They will still say the ref robbed them. Once again, our Evox competition. Um, if you want to win for yourself an Evox hamper, which right now, as we've, we've said already, is, is critically important in, in the, the sense of recovery and preparation in pre-season. So uh, for yourself then, uh, let me get it out here. There we go. Uh, first price, uh, at least the uh, first product that's most important for, for any um, product right now is the rapid recovery. You need to make sure that you have got your recovery product first place. So that, that's uh, very important. Um, and then of course, uh, Super Carbo, kick off for this before your training session, and, uh, or at least during your training session, and a Cytocrank, just to give you a little bit of extra boost to uh, give you through, get you through that very, very hard training session. So uh, during, uh, uh, at least uh, before, during, and after. That's the way to train. The only other thing you need to add into that mix is protein. And of course, next week, we'll look at giving that away as a prize. If you want to win for yourself this Evox hamper, all you need to do now is tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier. The official sports nutrition supplier. There you can see the name. The official sports nutrition supplier to, <laughs> uh, to uh, uh, DHL Stormers and Western Province Rugby. SMS the answer now and your name to 33280. 33280. I don't know how they do it on idols. But you can see the number at the bottom of your screen right now. 33280. 33280. SMS right now. Last week's winner, congratulations to uh, LB Duplessis. LB wins. Uh, LB, I suppose, LB could be a boy, could be a girl. Congratulations, LB, you win for yourself. The before, during, and after Evox Hamper, courtesy of Evox Advanced Nutrition, the official sports nutrition supplier to the Western Brothers Rugby and the DHL Stormers teams. It's a mission name and answer to 33280. We'll be back in a moment, we'll take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll catch up with uh, Brian Banner and see what he had to say back now. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Buy an Indica Vista Ego from $9.99 per month with a 3-year 100,000 km warranty, 4 years 100,000 km service plan, 3 years unlimited roadside assistance and more. To find out more, SMS the word TATA to 33280 and one of our service consultants will be in touch with you shortly. Tata is a good buy for sure. Hello folks, welcome back to Cape Rugby TV here on Cape Town TV. Nice to have you here. Remember we are on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. And you can find us on Twitter at Cape Rugby TV. Keep tweeting us and uh, keep Facebook booking us your information and your questions and we'll bring them to you, uh, answers to you on the show. But of course, remember the earlier you get those questions in, the easier it's going to be for us to, um, to uh, make sure that uh, you get yourself in the mix to win some of those great prizes and then we can ask the panel what the uh, you know questions are that you asked obviously if that's what you asked right um mr h you wanted to know um, if lance armstrong used uh, evox no i said if he had used only evox he wouldn't have been in the trouble that he was in. it's very interesting that you mention that because in 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 terms of the world and years years the, the my reverse spin on this if our drug-free sporting organizations are so qualified, the World Anti-Doping Association, if they are so qualified and so good at what they do, and knowing that they are so scientifically minded and able to test so well, why is it that they could not, after seven years of testing Lance Armstrong, why could they not find whatever it is that he did? So, I think there's a flip side to this. On the other hand, of course, one must be careful that you do not use supplements that are not endorsed. Right? This is where people go wrong. And they go knocking on the wrong doors and they get the wrong advice. And of course, if you've got kids out there, make sure that they use supplements that are endorsed. In other words, don't let them take the risk of going to uh, an inexperienced person or reading the hype in a magazine. <clears throat> the Western Province Stormers and the DHL Stormers endorse these products because they've gone through a rigorous process of being tested to be safe. That's why you want to make sure you use a product that's endorsed. So uh, be intelligent about it, folks. Keep everybody safe, keep them happy. And perhaps if Lance Armstrong had endorsed these things, well, who knows what other things he might not have picked up along the way. Um, righty then. Um, <coughs> Brian Abana, one of uh, South Africa's favorite players, 
who can have said anything more? If uh, and you'll pick up on this on the uh, in the interview. Um, but so 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 yes. Be, before I before I go to Herman and, and, and Jerome on this, let's catch up with uh, certainly who's turned into Cape Town's favourite rugby player. Let's hear what he had to say. Here we go, folks. Uh, this is what we've been waiting for all night long with the legendary Brian Abana, the biggest smile in South African rugby. Brian, uh, best, what is it, best yeah. back? I mean, yeah. that's a silly trophy to give you. I mean, you, we could have given you that before the awards. <laughs> no, I think it's a great honor. I think um, uh, to all the coaching staff and uh, the players around me over the last three years, I think Alistair and Robbie you know, have been my biggest critics, and that's been something I've really appreciated. You know, um, You've been working hard, and to have those guys supporting you, to have the group of players around me that I've had, you know, um, leaders like Skulk, John, Andres, you know, Jock Free when he was here, and then new mates that I got like Gio and Joan De Jong. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's been a really, really great environment and, you know, special bonds that have been formed. So it's been, it's been good and, you know, hopefully this gives us a little bit of silverware to show them how much I appreciated everything. You know, I've got to just tell you, I know we're gonna, we've got a very rough schedule tonight. There is not a single game that we go to, and we go to every club game every Saturday where we film, and we always have some of the kids come out and we ask them, who's your favorite player? Every single time, one of the little kids shouts, Brian Abana. <laughs> yeah, I think that's you know, Jay, it's an amazing opportunity. I think uh, sports is the one thing that, you know, no matter what your background is, the color of your skin, you know, where you're from, you know, sports is the one thing that brings us together. And I think we all had role models and, you know, guys we looked up to growing up. And I think to be able to give back to those people, to be able to be an inspiration to a nation, you know, is really special. You know, a great gift that, you know, I've been blessed with from God to do something I love each and every day of my life. And, you know, to inspire people is, you know, something I really appreciate. So, you know, hopefully I can continue doing that. Hopefully I can continue contributing to the growth of rugby, not only, you know, professionally, but in the rural areas where, you know, they don't really have much of it. So, you know, great Great privilege, great honor for, for kids to look up to you and hopefully the responsibility um, I can take on my shoulders and you know, continue inspiring kids across South Africa and hopefully across the world. Brian Abandon, ladies and gentlemen. Before him, it was Brayton Pulsa for many, many years. Um, Jerome, he has come down from the Bulls. I know he played for the Lions before that. A lot of people didn't really fancy Brian Abana in the beginning. To be honest, yeah. there's no lying about that. Why are we bringing in outside players and so on? But he's become the darling of Western Province, especially amongst the clubs. Yeah, JP, in his first, his first season here, there was a lot of players criticizing him. But as professional as he is, he turned around and he showed a lot of people wrong. I mean, he's now one of the best players, again, in the Springbok side. He's one of the best players in the province side. And he's one of the best players in, in, in South Africa at the moment. And, and uh, I mean, he's really professional in what he do. And I mean, it's actually for, for us at Western Province to have a guy like that, um, for younger kids to be the like, role model and, and, and just, yeah. just to go out. And, and as you said, everybody wants to be a young kid, wants to be like Brian Abana. It's actually good for the union to have a guy like that, and he's a true professional. Mr. H, um, I know you've uh, had a couple of posters from some of the young ladies out there who say, marry me and so on, with your <laughs> advanced romantic skills that you keep telling us you have. Um, <laughs> let me just ask you then. <laughs> uh, are we seeing the professional players bridging the gap from being professional and, and training at HPC where they're busy seven days a week, literally, that they are starting to... To, to, to mingle with, with, with the club players, that, that, that the club players can feel that they're part of the family? I think it's a requirement, you know, as part of the CSI program of the whole setup, that, that those players be involved and be seen in the communities as the role models. Yeah. And, I mean, it, like Jerome said, you know, Rainer Banner must be worth millions in marketing value to to any organization yeah yeah so it's great to have players like him and and you can see now you know that a lot of the others are building towards that the mm. the sheer coulisses the even it's a bit uh off, you know yeah. those guys are building big reputations at the moment even yeah, it's a bit certainly seems to have taken the um uh, the rugby world by storm he was, of course, uh, voted uh, the player's player of the year uh, yeah. at, at the awards, player of the year. Yeah, and that, that's a special award, like the Rom said earlier. You know, when you, as a, as a player, uh, was nominated and voted on by your peers and say, you're the best, we like you the best. So it's, it's great to have him. 
It means it, it means most. Yeah, the players are the players. It means most when it comes from the players. Yeah. And the fact is that he played his first Curry yeah. Cup game. Yeah, no. And he time. still hasn't turned 21. <laughs> he, he's, he's still a, he's, he's still under 21. He's a chrinky. <laughs> he can actually play for the under 21s and then go play for the seniors in the final. Also. <laughs> yeah, he can play two matches. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's a little young bit, enough. Yeah, like a typical club rugby player. <laughs> 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 Some of the other players there, let me uh, read them for you folks because we unfortunately haven't got time to go through everything. The women's player of the year was Chantal Sickers. Uh, the DHL most promising under 19 player was Stise Tolle. Western Province best back was Justin Gedult. Um, Justin Ben, DHL best forward. Josh Katzen, uh, most promising under 21 players, and you can see them on the list uh, on your screen right now. Francho van Wijk was the uh, best forward under 21 team. Most promising senior player was Skara Ntubeni, another post player that is found to be the darling of uh, Western Province. Eben Etzebet, the best forward. Brian Abandon, the best back. Dion Furry, the most valuable player. Alcorne Boerter was the club's player of the uh, year. And uh, the player's player of the year, as you heard Mr. H say there, the player's player of the year, of course, Eben Etzebet. Uh, but you're, going to, you're talking about value, Mr. H. Um, I remember back in the day they used to say that Putting Bob Skinstead in the team would secure you 10,000 bums in seats one way or the other. Yeah, I know that's, that's fair comment. Fair yeah. comment, yeah. <coughs> uh, folks, it is of course time for us to thank one of our other sponsors, Leisure Hotels. Leisure Hotels has been with us for the duration of the Cape Rugby since the inception. We're now in our uh, second season, by the way, and uh, we have uploaded in excess, I think in excess of something like uh, 350 uh, videos to YouTube, which are from the show, the various clips and cuts from the show. So we've gone and traveled an enormous distance and we would not have been able to do it without the likes of Tata and of course Leisure Hotels. If you want to win for yourself and say thank you to Leisure Hotels, then SMS right now, you can see the number on the screen, double three two eight oh yeah you see double three two oh three three two eight oh SMS to this number now the word leisure and you can put yourself in the mix to win a night's accommodation bread and breakfast at the Strand Towers. Let's take a look now and see who won last week's uh, prize. Congratulations to Leslie Apro. Leslie wins uh, for himself or herself, once again, a name that could be bi-genderous. Uh, one night's accommodation, bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. SMS the word leisure and your name to 33280. Congratulations, Leslie. Somebody will be in touch with you shortly. Right, folks, that was, of course, um, Leisure Hotels, and uh, we look forward to supporting them. Let's take an ad break. And we'll be back with you guys in a minute. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Wistenberg. Buy an Indica Vista Ego from $9.99 per month with a 3-year 100,000 km warranty, 4 years 100,000 km service plan, 3 years unlimited roadside assistance and more. To find out more, SMS the word TATA to 33280 and one of our service consultants will be in touch with you shortly. TATA is a good buy for sure. Uh, Jonah, did you see that I made up that name, by gender? I was just wanted to <laughs> ask you what, <laughs> what word was that? that? <laughs> I think it's a pretty good name. Yes, well, it's a good word. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Beyonce can come up with uh, bootlicious and I can come up with, <laughs> with bi-genderous. Let's quickly uh, touch on the Curry Cup. This is the big one over the weekend. Mr. H, you're finally hoping that people will not make pictures that says this Yelte Mal Leeg again. Gaan ons die trofee hier Of VP staan vir Weer Probeer. Weer Probeer, ja, dis Yelte Mal Leeg. Are we going to take it this week? Well, let's quickly touch on the Lions game. What do you make of that game against the Lions? We took it in the dying minutes. Yeah, I think if if it wasn't that my television screen was high up, I was on the field and in that <laughs> ball, you know. So, but it was great. It was a fantastic fight back. And, uh, you know, that's what we expect of the team. The yeah. only, my only wish is that they will play for a longer period like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not well, come in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Jerome, Sharks up against Western Province in the Curry Cup. But we've also got the under-19s and the mm. under-21s playing in the curtain raises, also against the Sharks. No, Bulls. Uh, sorry, against the Bulls at, um, at Kings Park. And it's, it's a massive, massive scenario, uh, feature for Western Province. Win or lose, we're in the Curry Cup final again with every single team. We just need to finish this off. Can we do it? JP, I really think this is the year. I mean, if you sneak in like we did last week against the Lions, 
then you can't. There's no other way for them to turn back now. And I mean, they've prepared well so far and uh, there's no injuries, uh, fortunately. So they're looking good. And I think this is the year which the, the, the ref definitely will make Cape Town proud. Jerome, Yaku Paper, on the day, uh, how much of an impact will he have on the game? JP, I mean, he's also a professional and I think they know now in the past there were lots of um, um, forward passes and tries not been scored, but with the technology now, uh, which they all use, yeah. there's actually no no for a coach to panic or say, listen, this ref is going to do something like this or he's, gonna, he's not going to award this and things. With the technology now, there's no way that any ref can make a mistake. Can make a, but now we're seeing quite a lot of, of, of late of referees starting to use the TMO in the middle of the game. Nowhere yeah. near the try line. Is this a new thing? Yeah, especially especially if it's a long distance try and, they, and, and the, 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 the assistant ref tell them that look, it might look like a forward pass, then they refer to the, to the TMO, which is great. In addition to that, they're also looking at foul play uh, if the touch charge got the flag out. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's actually no nothing that, that anybody have to worry about and if you if you if there's foul play you get your, your your suspension or whatever so the technology is there the refs are professional yeah. Um, yeah. i mean that you see a guy like bryce lawrence he's not he's not even gonna ref anymore because of of, of silly mistakes that he makes so i think everybody's under pressure and they know if the technology is there so you can't cheat anymore mr h um there's been like really shocking weather up in Durban in the last couple of days. Uh, not the last couple of days. In fact, it's shocking weather in Cape Town as well. I don't know what the heck's going on with the weather patterns in South Africa at the moment. But Durban has been wet. Do you think the weather's going to play in, in, in... If it's a wet game, will it play in the favour of Western Province? If it's a dry game, will it play in the favour of Western I Province? Think, I think the dry game would suit Western Province better. But uh, then any team must be prepared for Plan B. So if it rains... You know, no sense afterwards saying, you know, the rain hampered us. You must know what you're going to do before the time. Well, on the basis then of what you've just said, um, any team must be planned for plan, plan for plan B. Um, I don't see how the Sharks can win this because there's no such thing as planning for Gio Aplon. Yeah. So we, yeah, we're going to beat them with an unknown plan C. And that is the, the secret. How, 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 <laughs> how brilliant was... <laughs> Alistair to bring Scruder into the flyer position. Yes, yes, got the got the. The point. sharks or uh, the, the the lions never knew what was going to happen there. They knew what Katrakilis would do. Yeah. But they never expected that, so it was great. Unpredictability. Absolutely. That is actually what we're looking for, yeah. and that's what people have been referring to for all these uh, years. Play of, even if it's a bit, it's come off in the last rugby. five minutes. Yeah. Running rugby unpredictable rugby there's no other defensive structure in the world that can stop it how do you know where to go and actually what they can do also jp if i was them now ask julian the the, the groundsman yes. to leave the sprinklers on while they train <laughs> 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 yes well there we go folks this is going to be the shortest super brew prediction in the entire season all right we've only got one game to select jerome sharks western province province by 12. mr h Province 7. Province 7. I'm going to go. Let me think about this. I'm going to go with province by 7. Uh, Jerome. <laughs> 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 oh, here we go. Uh, province by 7. Yes, I'm going to stick with that on the basis of the fact that Mr. H went for it. Um, no, that's my own prediction. Jerome, um, I was going to ask you now about the next game, but I've just realized that's it. <laughs> there we go. That is it. There's no more. All right. Uh, uh, well, there we go. Congratulations then to the Western Kings. Province. The Kings and the uh, Who cares about the Kings? The Kings shouldn't be in the team. In, uh, come on. Are you, have, you, have you got an opinion to venture on there? This is a, Tommy, this is not a political solution to a technical nightmare. No, that is, I don't know. That's, you've said everything there, Jackie. So that's everything. That's the lot? Yeah, that's the lot. Mr. You've explained it. Yeah, no. A political solution to a technical nightmare. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do up there, uh, but this is not the right solution. They're going to be out of the out of the Curry Cup, or at least out of the Super 15 within the next couple of days, and the Lions will be back in the mix. But meanwhile, the Lions are going to be coming back from the Kings to go play against the Kings. I don't know what's going on here. This is like 
American politics, for heaven's sake. <laughs> you don't do it that way. It's just quite simply wrong. I don't know how. I know that the Eastern Cape needs investment. I know we need to see development there. But this, gentlemen, in my opinion, is what, not the answer. What development? For 80 or for 70 odd minutes, there were not a single black player in the side. Well, you actually just hit the nail on the head. They've just asked they for had, eight. Yeah, they, they had one guy, Samoan. So, well, this is my point, Jerome. I think you, 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 you're sort of making my point now. They, they're doing this for development, yet they ask for eight international players. Yeah. What for? And New Zealand coaches. So where is the... Yes. Where is the opportunity for the... Uh, anyway, folks. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, All right, right. Let's not talk politics. That's the whole point. It's, 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 you cannot bring politics into, into rugby. Rugby is there as a vehicle for uh, communities to come together and eventually out of that the spin-off is that there's a couple of professional games for the rest rugby is a game to bring society together the only thing out of that is the showcase of uh, entertainment that we see which is professional rugby that's it that's what rugby is for that's what it is there for anyway it's kind of a social philanthropic um, discussion that uh, Jerome Let's hold thumbs for Western Province. We'll see you again next week, same time. No, we won't, in actual fact. No, because it's for you're the older too, people. You're too young for the show. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go come the week after. Yeah. <laughs> Which means, Mr. H, I will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say best wishes to the three teams, the management, and let next week look after itself. Yeah, 100%. Now, best of luck to the boys. We'll see you folks next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend, and hold thumbs for Western Province. Bye-bye.